What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Hair of Aviation. Hope you guys had a fantastic day today. And today we have the March 2023 Albuquerque Sunport International Airport update for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's videos. Today we have an absolutely loaded Albuquerque update in store for you guys. We got several aircraft changes, some new routes on deck, and all kinds of fun items to dive into in today's video. So I hope you guys are excited for it. Without any further delay, let's get started everybody. It feels great to be back at the Sunport. It has been quite some time since I've got to film a Sunport update, even though you guys have been seeing the updates as usual so i'm so glad to be back here at the sunport we got some awesome changes to digest some very interesting ones at that i'm really excited to get into today's video everybody so without any further delay let's go ahead and get started uh, as per usual we'll start over here again i believe this is b number four this is going to be our american eagle umbra ear j-175 on behalf of skywest airlines this guy's going to make the non-stop service day in from los angeles international airport uh, this is a turnaround service that's done about three times a day for american they're doing a really nice job on that service and uh, going really well there with southwest and delta so glad see lax doing good for them and they're doing a really good job on that so like i said this 175 is out to lax as usual looking really good Pushing back right here, we have a, or sorry, pulling into the gate rather, I should say. We have this Delta Airlines Airbus E321. This guy's currently coming in from Lance Hartsfield Jackson International Airport or such aviation as our airport. Uh, this guy's currently coming in on the late night flight. Uh, one element of updates I've kind of thought about adding, even though it would be time committing, it would be really cool. I've kind of thought about doing time stamps and, or I'm sorry, time frames, excuse me, time frames and kind of airline information on the bottom of airport updates, kind of in that bottom portion so you guys can see what's going on. Kind of thought about that because all these airports are fantastic and I'd like to try to integrate all the really cool elements that i can although there are some updates that sometimes are i wouldn't use the word repetitive because there are usually quite a few changes but you know it would be cool to have a time frame kind of make it look you know uh even more realistic so let me know what you guys think about that certainly a thought but the good news with the flexibility option is it does give us plenty of options when it comes to adding these aircraft but yeah uh, nevertheless lance is doing really good uh three daily herbs e through 21s and yeah it's looking really nice so glad to see lance going strong and we'll have a big change for that coming up so stay tuned for that in the future here in front of us, we have this Delta Airlines Airbus A321. This guy's currently loading up uh, with service out to Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, this flight is still one A321 and two Ember 175s a day, which again, the A321 main line is a huge upgrade as, or up gauge, excuse me, as we did not have that previously, uh, dating back to January. So it's really cool to see that this is still going very strong and it's fantastic. Also a very interesting note between some of the Delta A321s by engine models, or at least the two that I have. I have one that has an antenna farther up from the satcom box and then i have one version as you can see that has a very close to satcom box i've not checked to see which one's correct which is kind of funny but i'm sure one of them is so uh certainly interesting though and i'm sure ng just kind of got it backwards in the mold process the factory workers which is all good that's some variety to it so I'm not going to complain even though it's a little unrealistic in that regard but it's all good Loading up right here, we have this Delta Connection number at your GS-175. This guy's operating on behalf of SkyWest as well. And you guessed it, he's out to Los Angeles International Airport. So SkyWest flying, uh, flying, flying two services for uh, two different carriers here to Albuquerque to uh, Los Angeles, which is very cool to get to see. I think uh, Delta's doing really good with this service from what I understand and I've seen. So certainly glad to see this doing well and I'm excited to see what the future of it holds. So like I said, this guy's nonstop out to Los Angeles. Loading up right here at the uh, corner gate, we have this Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-900ER. This guy's currently coming in from Seattle Tacoma today, which has been a very consistent service on the daily uh, service there. So that's fantastic to see. Uh, Alaska's been a nice player here at uh, Albuquerque with their Portland and Seattle services. So I'm certainly excited to see what happens in the near future, and hopefully they continue to progress at a uh, fast pace. So love to see it there for Alaska. As you just saw, I was getting this aircraft into position for the update. But here we have this JetBlue Airbus A320 with the blueberries tail. Uh, not many of these around anymore, so I definitely want to use them until they get repainted. Uh, I'm not the biggest expert, but I believe Spotlight and High Rise are the predominant A320 tails we're currently seeing, and uh, 190s too. Well, 190s have some hops, but it's mainly that uh, High Rise tail fin, from what I understand. Sorry, I'm moving the aircraft as I try to film this. Nevertheless, this guy's currently making the nonstop service in from New York, John F. Kennedy. Uh, on the Wikipedia list of service, now as seasonal which is not i'm not sure if that's technically correct or not because it's been really hit or miss over the last year but it is currently on a uh two to three weekly schedule so it's certainly nice to see that they got some frequency going there and again i'm excited to see what happens with jet blue services and maybe they'll add lossing so i think that would be a good route for them but again we shall see on that 
Pushing back right here, we have this American Eagle Umbra Ear J-175. On the behalf of Envoy Air, this guy is currently making his non-stop service today out to Austin Bertram International Airport. It's really cool to see American doing super well with this service, so much so that in April, it's going up to two daily, which is very impressive. I did look at the load factors uh, over 2022, and they were very impressive. Most months were over 80%, which is very impressive. Uh, in retrospect, Tulsa even had a hard time getting to 80. So it's really cool to see it consistently over 80. And uh, yeah, it's really awesome to see it, that there's so much demand to Austin and yeah American must be competing really nicely against Southwest and uh, getting the Google flights algorithm and everything because they are selling a bunch of tickets there so I'm excited to see what happens there for American and hopefully they'll continue that progression but like I said this 175 out to Austin Bertram and I'm excited to see the two daily services next month so that's very exciting uh, loading up right here, we have this American Airlines Boeing 737-800, one of many new models in today's airport update, or obviously it's already been featured before, but it's the first update of it in an Albuquerque update. Uh, this is one of my favorite models in my collection. I absolutely love it. It is well, literally almost a perfect model. I don't have any issues with it. The color is great. The Wi-Fi box is fantastic. Mold is obviously um, on top. Uh, it's fantastic. Nevertheless, this guy's currently getting heavily serviced. We got some bags and some uh, fuel trucks and everything. This guy's making his nonstop service day out to Chicago Hare International Airport. This service has been very consistent for American uh, throughout many mainline aircraft. So it's really cool to have been following this throughout the pandemic, obviously. We had several regional jets and now we're finally up to consistent uh, 737-800. So really excited to see where this goes and they're doing really good with that. Uh, special delivery number one of the day will be the American Airlines Airbus A321 in the uh, Medal of Honor flagship valid delivery. Absolutely love this aircraft, especially after flying on it, as you guys probably know. It's a really cool aircraft, and I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to fly on board it. Nevertheless, this guy's currently making it out to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport today. American Airlines, as expected, has many mainline uh, flights to Dallas out of Albuquerque, uh, mainly 737s and E321s, uh, but it's kind of by the month what aircraft they'll end up filing in. So we will keep tabs on it. But Nevertheless, it's 321 back out to DFW. Uh, United has a double lineup of Continental Globe on this side of the terminal today, the south side of the terminal. So let's take a look at that. We have this United Airlines Boeing 737 800 in the Continental Globe delivery. This guy's currently making a non stop service today out to Denver International Airport, DIA. Uh, great airport to travel to. I highly recommend it. It's a very neat airport. Nevertheless, like I said, this guy's out to Denver, like I said. Uh, this has been a really good route for Albuquerque, as expected. They've done really well in it. And I'll talk about some uh, other carriers that didn't quite have as much success, uh, and Denver was one of their destinations. Uh, you might be able to figure out who that is because you didn't see them earlier. But nevertheless, there we go. Moving on down here, we have this United Airlines Boeing 737-900ER in the Eco Skies livery. Fantastic to get this in here. It's all a picture of the uh, original version from 2013. It was a blended 737-900. Uh, the winglet was a very dark green, uh, probably double the shade of what you're seeing on that winglet right there. More of like a uh, kind of like an olive green, I think would be kind of a good comparison. And the Eco Skies titles were very small. It was like here in the front left, it was pretty hard to see. So this version, I think, definitely does a better job. And we'll see if they replace Eco Skies uh, with the sustainable fuel or if they keep Eco Skies on the uh, newer livery. But nevertheless, this guy's currently out to Houston or Cano, which has an interesting uh, route change. Now, Houston is now seeing um, one 175, a 319, and a 737-900 all on a daily basis, which uh, for retrospective, United normally went with the uh, frequency option on their Houston service, uh, normally multiple 145 CRJ200s, 175s. But now we're getting uh, only one of those, and uh, we're now getting the uh, two daily mainline which is really impressive and uh, I don't know if United is trying to cater to that out of Houston at all whether they're trying to get uh, more capacity for less banks or if they're just this was a one-off or not necessarily one-off but an Albuquerque situation because Tulsa is still seeing several uh, for instance uh, regional jet flights um, and then yeah I'm not seeing in other words I'm not seeing many other places going up to double daily mainline on a service like that so not exactly sure what United's intention is with that but certainly cool and we'll definitely use it to our fullest potential so like I said this guy's currently making the service today out to Houston very cool change all right, into the Southwest section we go. We have several uh, aircraft here and several announcements for them. So I'm excited to talk about Southwest. Here's this Boeing 737-700 in the heart livery with the Scimitar winglets. This guy's currently getting ready to push back. This guy's gonna be heading up to Denver today and came in earlier today on a flight from Dallas Love Field. Southwest continues to do really well here. Uh, they still have quite a few destinations and they're gonna be adding to that portfolio here in the near future. So we'll talk about that here more in a moment. This Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 
700 with the blended winglets. It's currently making me non-stop service today. This guy is coming in from Burbank, and this guy now has a non-stop service up to Phoenix today. Looking really good for Southwest right there. Absolutely love that effort. Uh, first special delivery here for Southwest today, and another new model. This is the Indy Models 1 to 400 scale. Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700 in the Colorado 1 livery. Uh, that navy shade certainly uh, looks interesting, but outside of that, this is a really nice model, and I'm very glad to have it. This guy's currently getting uh, loaded up with some fuel, and this guy's going to be making a non-stop service today. Heading over to, um, C or I'm sorry, Albuquerque does not have San Diego. I keep always getting them intertwined, Reno, Orange County, uh, Albuquerque. Uh, we'll send this guy over to Los Angeles, and this guy came in earlier today from Austin Bertram International Airport. Southwest continues to really make strides here uh, with frequencies, and they've been adding a bunch of new ones. So, like I said, stay tuned, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Alrighty, currently loading up right here, we have another new model, and a, a really, really new model, as I didn't have this special livery beforehand on the 800. I did have that uh, Colorado one, just the Gemini. Now we have this NG model's 1 to 400 scale Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-800 in the Tennessee 1 livery. This is a really nice model, and I'm very excited for Illinois 1, Desert, and Canyon all to come in, and we'll really have some Southwest mix and match. So, uh, kind of cool that Southwest chose to repaint these all so that we get another round of new models, but at the same time, it is kind of expensive. So, uh, there's a pro and cons all of it but nevertheless this guy's kind of loading up non-stop service today this guy's heading out to houston hobby and this guy came in earlier today from um i think if we have any other uh los angeles area airports i think it's just burbank and lax but we'll talk about a new one coming here in just a moment um i don't think we have san jose dang it i'm trying to think of uh what cities we do have here i have the list right here i didn't want to have to resort to a list but i don't want to miss any obvious ones um this guy's currently heading over to um that's the this is the reno sheet i don't know why reno ended up here uh but nevertheless uh, i apologize about this is this she got any routes on it i uh, know it does not well uh we'll send this guy I'm trying to think of um of cities that i'm missing here uh i didn't do phoenix yet i didn't want to i want to save it but we'll do phoenix right here so it makes sense uh that guy's up to phoenix Lastly, we have this Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700 in the Canyon Blue livery with blended winglets. This is another new engine model, and it looks fantastic. Really nice color there. I really like that effort. This guy's kind of making his non-stop service today out to St. Louis and came in earlier today from, uh, make sure I don't miss any, like, obvious, oh, Las Vegas, the lost wages. How the heck could I forget Las Vegas? Uh, maybe it's because I thought about uh, this earlier uh, in a little bit, and I'll kind of shut that off here in a minute. But nevertheless, he's looking really good right there. All right, so up there on the top, we got the Boutique PC-12. This guy's currently making the non-stop flight from Carlsbad, and we'll be heading back out there. I'm glad to see that uh, they've been doing really well with those services, and I'm excited to see where they can go in the future with that. So that is currently what he is doing. And lastly, we have this United Airlines Airbus E-19 in the Eva Blue livery. This guy's currently coming in from uh, Chicago here today. It's going to be heading back up there. Uh, really impressed with all the main line there. There obviously is quite a bit of demand, so it's not surprising. But it's certainly really, really cool to see uh, United committing to that, just like Americans. So that is currently what he is doing. Alrighty, guys. So here we go with the general aviation section. Uh, I know I keep promising that I'm trying my best to work on some additional ones. And unfortunately, just between college and all these uh, videos that I'm trying to continue to get out on a consistent basis and family events and every uh, reason in between, excuse me, uh, it just hasn't happened yet. But it certainly is on my list. I can assure you that. And it is a goal of mine. So I'm very hopeful that that will be happening at some point. Uh, here's the Cessna 172. This guy's currently making a local flight around the area. So he's looking really good right there. And we have this Learjet 75. This guy just came in from Vans and Eyes, and now he's going to be making a, a non-step service over to, um, I'm trying to think of like a St. Louis's G Airport. The name's not coming to my mind. If anybody knows, comment in the comment section, but I just need to look it up. But nevertheless, uh, he's out to there. So let's send him out to St. Louis's General Aviation Airport. All right, so here we go with the cargo area. Here's the Primair Boeing 737-800. Like I said in the previous couple updates, and this is a good time to look at this since uh, the last couple updates were large to say the least. This is a really nice addition for Albuquerque. I've been very pleased to see Primair's uh, continued dedication and support on their daily Cincinnati service. So that's what we're finding here. Uh, this is a really nice compliment for the airport. And I think that this will be a very critical service for many years to come considering Amazon's exponential growth. Why can I not talk today? Not even trying to talk that fast and all those various reasons. So like I said, he's up to Cincy. 
Okay, here's the UPS Airbus E300 freighter. This guy's currently making a non-stop service today. Uh, coming in from Ontario, this guy's now out to El Paso. Uh, some really cool services here on UPS. They have a very unique network uh, with some one-off destinations. They also file in quite regularly. So really cool and uh, yeah, really cool to think uh, about three years ago uh, at this time. Well, the really cool part, uh, being the ups a300 i got on ebay that was a actually a pretty good deal the bad part being the pandemic obviously because this was right around the time uh when this video is going out um when unfortunately obviously like i said the pandemic started but i also got that ups a300 so for anybody that's been watching my videos for quite some time now you probably remember that uh can't believe my channel was uh small it was uh i think we weren't even quite to a thousand subscribers yet and now we are where we are today so again that's all thanks to the continued support of all you guys and all the um support that you guys gave me and uh to where we are today so i can't uh, pr i can't thank you guys enough for that man i cannot talk but let's keep trying I currently loading up, loading up over here. We have this UPS Boeing 767-300 freighter. This guy's currently loading up with a non-stop service today over to Louisville on the turnaround. Uh, let me know if you guys think it's Louisville or Louisville. I think it's Louisville is how it's supposed to be pronounced, but again, I don't know. So, uh, anyways, like I said, he's heading over to Louisville. Uh, this is a good-looking aircraft right here. We're getting some cargo on board. Got some fuel over there on the right, and the crew's going to begin on board once the bus arrives. So, very excited for that, and that should be looking really good. And UPS continues to go strong. Lastly, for the cargo area, we have the FedEx Express Boeing 767-300 freighter as well. I'm really tempted. I kind of want to get that winglet one by Phoenix, even though there's not many of those. It certainly is a very cool one-off. Uh, same for the UPS uh, without winglet 767 freighter. Uh, I did see that one in Atlanta and Dallas, too. So I have seen that one. Uh, I think there's multiple, actually, but have seen those a couple times. They're cool planes. Anyways, this guy's currently getting it loaded up right here. He is uh, currently, or actually, the cargo's coming off, and he'll begin reload here. The crew's getting on board, uh, changing all up. Up, doing what they need to do back out to memphis the double daily 767 which is very impressive and i'm glad to see that fedex is doing a really good job here when it comes to their services and i'm excited to see what's to come in the future so like i said he's gonna heavily service he'll be back to memphis here in a little bit to round out today's airport update, we have a conga line, to say the least, of taxing aircraft. Let me know if you guys know where that reference comes from. Your hint is that it was another airport update video on YouTube. We'll start right here with this Spirit Airbus A320neo. This guy is currently number three in line to take off as he's going to be heading over to Las Vegas, Las Vegas, of course. Uh, really cool to see that Spirit is, um, it's interesting because their load factors, I was looking at those uh, that will coincide with another uh, topic I'll talk about here in just a moment. But I was looking at their load factors and they were very 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 poor uh, about 50 percent average which is obviously not very good if you're operating uh, these very expensive e320 neo aircraft so i'm hopeful that spirit's gonna be able to get it figured out because that's not gonna cut it i do not want to see them leave but they kind of need to get that figured out uh they're not really known to do many um like three weekly services they're more of a daily airline which uh kind of hurts kind of doesn't you know that's where legion frontier really stride but it also helps have that daily uh frequency and who knows maybe just needs some time to catch on has only been like nine or yeah, it's been, or let's see here. No, it's been more like uh, six months, a little over six months. So hasn't been a ton of time, but hopefully, well, I guess six months is quite a bit of time. So hopefully it'll continue to get caught on there. But yeah, number three, LT wages. Currently number two, we've got this United Airlines Airbus E319. This is heading out to San Francisco today, which has also been performing quite well. I'm kind of surprised like Southwest or nobody else has really jumped in on the SFO service. But again, I guess it's a monopoly and United's got it under control. So glad they have the infrastructure to operate it and hopefully they'll continue to do really well with that. So like I said, this guy's currently out to um, uh, San Francisco. And waiting for the arriving aircraft to touch down, we have this Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-900. This, of course, is, or I'm sorry, MAX 9. Uh, this aircraft came in earlier today from Portland back out there. Unfortunately, Portland is only seeing two weekly frequencies, Saturday, Sundays right now. Uh, in April, that will be, or I'm sorry, in May, that will be uh, making it up to about four or five weekly. So I don't know what particularly happened. Uh, you would think that they would operate a uh, 175 daily rather than two bigger 737 airplanes um, only twice a week. But again, maybe the demand that is just calling for that. It is kind of a quiet time for Portland outside of business travel. The weather is not the uh, most leisurely best out there. So, but yeah, it's certainly glad to see that they're not like dropping it or anything. Just need to get it through the time, which is understandable. So like I said, this guy's out to Portland and hopefully those frequencies will be going up very soon. Lastly, on short final for runway, uh, 
8 is this American Airlines Airbus A320. This is another new model, uh, the first uh, debut of it here in the update. This guy's currently, or it should be, it might not be, but I'm pretty sure I did not use it last time. So this should be brand new for this update. This guy is currently on short final, like I said, for only 08, heading over this display threshold. And he is arriving in from none other than Phoenix Sky Harbor. Phoenix doing really good. Uh, three daily Airbus airplanes in the narrow body family. And I think they might have one CRJ. But yeah, this is looking really good. I kind of wanted to feature a Mesa in here. I should have got one in here. Mesa CRJ-900 clarifies. Those are going to be going over to United within. Uh, they probably, they uh, actually tomorrow at the time of this video is coming out. March 4 will be the, excuse me, inaugural uh, flight uh, for the United CRJ-900. <laughs> it's crazy to say for Mesa. Uh, it's going to be Dallas to Houston at 5 a.m., which is a pretty interesting choice. But I just guess they're just going to file it right out. Um, I'm assuming they're going to be either, you know, I would not be surprised, honestly. I, I don't think they would do this, but it wouldn't surprise me with Mesa if they would just fly them in the American livery as United. But I would assume they're probably going to use some house liveries. They have the blank gray ones and the Mesa house. So they'll probably use those to start. And then uh, June 2nd is really when it kicks in the gear. They're going to have uh, Tulsa's even on the schedule, but they have a bunch of smaller cities. OKC, Wichita, Northwest Arkansas, Tucson, to name a few. I think Albuquerque was also on that list, so we can expect them here. Uh, we'll hope that Gemini will make us a model, but if not, I'll just go ahead and get another Shapeways 900, and we'll just go with that. That should be a pretty simple custom, and that will do the job until uh, we actually get one, and I can also just use my Mesa House CRJ-900 model I got too. So that's all looking good, and that will do it for today's Albuquerque update. But first and foremost, we have some talking to do, so let's talk. Okay, so several topics to talk about here. First and foremost, uh, I feel really bad about this, and I can't believe I didn't realize until now, until I was working on a project that uh, featured this. But the Albuquerque International Airport logo got updated in early 2019. Marginally, it was uh, they changed the fonts and the colors up a little bit, made it more vibrant, and it looks more sleek. Uh, I did not feature that until today, so I'm super sorry that I've missed that for three years. Just nobody's told me. Uh, the old logo was just a little bit, you know, it's a little more dull. So that's it was a, a marginal change, but just made it look a little bit cleaner. So I'm sorry that I wasn't featuring that until now. And now we have the new Albuquerque logo in here. So again, I'm sorry about that. But the new Albuquerque logo should be in here now. So glad to see that. Uh, the next change that I wanted to discuss is that Southwest Airlines will have three new services beginning very soon, which is super exciting. Sorry about that, everybody. But what I was saying is Southwest Airlines will be starting three new services to Albuquerque Sunport. One, is, or actually, I guess technically two of them are resumptions, but uh, long fed resumptions. So the first of which being the Kansas City International Airport service. Kansas City, I think that was last operated uh, seasonally in 2019. I think could be wrong on that. Would have to go really dig into that. Uh, that will be returning on April 11th. I think it's a, I can't remember if it was a like five weekly or daily, or if it might be only be Saturday only, but that service should be coming back. Haven't seen anything on San Antonio, so I'm assuming we're kind of, uh, actually, I think we talked about that in the last update. That might be coming back later in the summer. So we'll see if that's coming out, but uh, Kansas City should be the first back. So that's fantastic. Another long fetch uh, route result. I think the last time this was operated probably was right when I was starting to do Albuquerque updates. I'm, I'm taking the assumption it was summer of 2018, maybe tw summer 2017. It's been a long time, uh, maybe even summer 2019. But it's uh, the Orlando International Airport Saturday only service. Many airports are seeing that resumed. Uh, other examples include Des Moines and Tulsa. Albuquerque is going to be getting this treatment. It will start July 15th. And I think it's going to run for at least quite a while longer than Tulsa's in Des Moines. So I'm looking forward to that. And that should be another great service. I was just talking about that in the last update, how I think that they should have a Florida service. And Southwest finally did. But I wouldn't be surprised if Breeze Airways makes their way in here at some point. I don't know when that will be. But I think they have a bunch of potential maybe even operating like a Porvo or something as well. The final new service, at least for the moment, is the really uh, flagship one. Or not flagship, but the really marquee one. As it is brand, brand new. Although it is to a similar destination, it's still really cool. Long Beach, California will be beginning on September 5th. It will be a daily service. Uh, Long Beach will now be the third airport in the Los Angeles area that Southwest will serve from Albuquerque. They already served the large LAX International Airport, as you guys know, and also Burbank, which started in uh, early 2022, which has been a great cornerstone. It's done really well. So glad to see Southwest continuing to build up that Long Beach presence. Um, yeah, and that's what I was going to mention here is it's really, really interesting to see that uh, Southwest has been catering to uh, really building up quite a few of these cities in the uh, bigger areas so like we uh, Los Angeles for instance the really big one is they have really big operations at Burbank LAX 
uh, Long Beach, and I think they even have a pretty solid presence at Ontario as well, and even uh, Orange County too. So really impressed to see that. So Southwest really doing that. There's not too many other cities that are huge examples of that principle, although I will say that, um, you know, they're kind of starting to make some noise over in uh, Houston and uh, Chicago, especially their O'Hare presence is really big. So I don't think that they'll like, you know, expand into Rockford or something, but anything's possible. So it's certainly interesting to see what Southwest is doing in regards to uh, all those LA airports. And yeah, those are be a bunch of new cornerstone routes. Um, like I said, I think San Antonio is going to be a Saturday only returning, so that'll also be nice. And uh, yeah, Southwest still has quite a few destinations to various places, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they can continue to expand that and what they'll do. So that was my other big topic. And then uh, the Instagram's been looking good for Albuquerque. They've been posting about a bunch of good stuff. Uh, like I said, the Long Beach announcement was one of the biggest ones. That was a brand, brand new route, no resumption. But yeah, Southwest, really cool to see them resuming a bunch of routes that they previously had uh, before the pandemic. And yeah, uh, Southwest's business model is always really fascinating me with how they're able to operate. Uh, but it makes sense. They're a very consolidated fleet, but they still like two free checked bags. That's like uh, for most airlines, it's $60 right there. So that's crazy. Uh, they're very affordable fares. I have several segments ahead planned on them and just all the various elements. So it's really crazy to get to see all this, but like I said, it's just what it is and it's really cool to see. So all those elements considered, it is pretty awesome. So uh, outside of that, Albuquerque is doing really well. Uh, oh yeah, there, here's the final topic. This was a sad one. I shouldn't have saved it for last, but it just sparked back to my head. This was kind of my fault for being, um, I wouldn't say not observant, but assuming that it would eventually come back. Uh, two airlines have officially completely dropped Albuquerque out of their schedule. The first one and the least surprising is Allegiant. Well, not least surprising, but after them being gone for that extended period of time, Allegiant. Uh, they dropped both Las Vegas and, um, or Las Vegas, Las Vegas and uh, Austin. Uh, Las Vegas and Austin both got resumed in January of 2022, and they made it all the way up until about May. I think that they were scheduled to come back, so that's why I was assuming eventually they would come back. And I think there was even probably a couple updates where I threw them in here without uh, the adequate uh, research. Unfortunately, those did end up getting uh, fully discontinued. Uh, Austin and Las Vegas both performed fairly well until the resumptions and they just fell off. I'm assuming the reason they fell off uh, dramatically is because the uh, suspensions and when they tried to bring them back, it was a good time as especially on that Las Vegas service uh, in Austin, uh, Southwest American, um, uh, and then uh, I thought there was one other airline to Vegas, maybe um, not Frontier. We'll talk about that in a moment, but uh, Las Vegas Southwest did really well, and then Austin Southwest and American both did really good. So I'm really impressed that they found a way to screw both those up. So Allegiance now not here anymore. So that's one airline off. Um, I think our peak airline count was like 11 or so. I'll count it up here in a second. But yeah, Allegiant unfortunately is officially gone. Super sad. Hopefully maybe they'll return at some point. But I think that um, you know if, if uh, it wouldn't have went to the crap or when it comes to. Um, uh, the pandemic, they should, they would have had Orlando, Sanford, um, Vegas, and Austin, probably some more by now, but what can I say? Uh, on the contrary, Frontier also is officially gone too, which was a big surprise. I thought they were just, uh, they, they being patient with it, but no, they just are completely gone. They cut both Denver and, uh, Las Vegas. Denver was really surprising as that performed really well for them previously. Uh, what ended up happening in Denver was, uh, I think it was very hit or miss, very similar to Allegiant. Then it came back and then it performed even worse than what Allegiant did. I mean, there was plenty of 30% load factors and uh, even lower than that. So obviously not justifiable, but it was impressive because Southwest and United were both over 90%. So I don't know why Frontier did so bad or if like they had like some ex ridiculous price that they were charging or what the problem was. Uh, but yeah, they just completely missed the bullet on that. I don't know if they missed out on the Google flight algorithm or what happened. Uh, similarly, Las Vegas also had very, very, very poor load factors. At least they were slightly better uh, near the uh, 50s and 60s. I think there was even a couple in the 70s. When the route started for Frontier, I think they even had it in the 80s, which was really cool. I just don't know what happened. It's like all these low-cost carriers completely fell off. And like I was saying earlier, Spirits kind of fell, uh, which kind of sucks. But I don't think they're going to cut it. I think they just need to... They need to make some adjustments there to be more applicable for their desires. And yeah, really the uh, only low cost carrier we do have now is Spirit and I guess Southwest, if you want to count that. But yeah, now our total airline count is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it is, it's eight. Okay, it's eight. So we were at 10 with uh, Allegiant Frontier. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's because Volaris was way back. Volaris was way back when they cut their services. So. Yeah, I think that um, 
that's absolutely crazy but um yeah unfortunately now we're down to eight and uh, not the only airport tulsa did see frontier go in march of 2022 as well uh for similar reasons and again i think the suspensions and i don't know like i said if the google flights algorithm got messed up or why these load factors were so bad but they were very obnoxious um i do see when i'm looking at itineraries and everything that some routes in frontiers network are ridiculously expensive so maybe that's the reason maybe they charge ridiculous prices i can't fully answer those questions but what I can say is that it's pretty interesting and uh, very sad news for Albuquerque, but hopefully Breeze will be number nine or even Avello. I know Avello just announced Colorado Springs, a pretty, uh, even a smaller airport than um, uh, Albuquerque, but kind of a comparable size. But yeah, that Burbank competition with Southwest would be interesting. Or like I said, Orlando, Tampa especially would be great for Breeze. But again, these are stories to be written for another time and hopefully we'll be able to write them at some point. But yeah, outside that, Albuquerque's doing really good. Glad to see the new services coming in, the frequency changes, and hopefully even more awesome adjustments into the lineup. Well, with all that being said, everybody, that will do for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My name is Dredger of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Dredger of Aviation. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon as Red Bear Aviation is signing off.